favorite vacation company. I think so. Hi, everybody. Welcome. And, uh, welcome. Um, the phones are ringing. Um, things are happening. Hey, look at the new background. And, what do you uh, think? And, and look at the new blonde that's here. That's not Susie. That's not me. That's, that's not Susie. She's platinum. Uh, platinum. That's, no, that, she looks like Nicole Kidman. With oh, the, my with God. Haircut. You wish. No haircut, no color. She's, she's, uh, um, I have this new COVID-19 do. <laughs> that's what it's going to be called. <laughs> Right, Welcome well, to Chief of Geography, and it's Thursday, and we're so glad to be back. Yeah. I'm live, and Jose is live in a box. Yeah, Let well, we're, we're, we're practicing social distancing, so I'm like six feet away, so I don't give my cooties to Susie, but let's get going. Welcome and happy Thursday, everyone. It is June 18th. It's a little after 3 p.m. Today, we're going to visit a great destination, the wonderful state of Tennessee. And now, without further ado, here's Miss Susie Q. But first, we before we do that, let's make a shout out for all the agents that are in the room. Miss Amanda, can you help me? Here we us? go. Yeah, let me do the shout out today. So we have, um, let's see, Elizabeth Glenn Brandon, uh, Tara Dolan is here, Regina Fancy Face Strowman, uh, Judy Elliott, Deborah Joyce. Uh, Christina, Tondry Wright, hello, I love your emoji as always. Uh, Cheryl <laughs> Shires, Donna Fontaine with her. Margarita's in the shade today because it's obviously not sunny. Um, Lavise Howard, and let's see who we have on YouTube. Hello to everyone on YouTube. And yeah, that's our shout out. All right, great. Wonderful. Great, thank you everybody for supporting us. Um, so let's let's get right to the PowerPoint announcement so we can get that out of the way and we can go to Tennessee. So let's uh, let's go to the PowerPoint on this because I fixed this slide. So and Donna just updated us that um, Jeffrey's um, internet is still out. Right. So we'll, we'll try to get them. I mean, we'll try. You know. Um, but let's go. Let's go to this and and then Susie and I are going to talk to you guys about something else. Um, here's the Art to Travel tip of the day. During this time period, please check your pre-booking, check your destinations, check for your flight information before you even do anything, okay? And um, yeah, just before you even start working on the booking, check to see if the state country is open, and if it's open, fine, but are the hotels open? I'm getting too many calls going, let's say I'm on, I'm, I'm on Funjet and they wanna go to, you know, Hawaii. Well, we don't know what Hawaii is doing next month. We don't know. So, <laughs> you know, help us out there. And, and Susie and I were going to talk about something. I think next week what I'll probably do for the Jose Wednesday training is the importance of follow-up. You want to share with them what, what yeah. happened? Um, we had a call earlier today from an agent, and she had customers at the airport uh, trying to board a flight. And her confirmation from the wholesaler never had the flight confirmed. It said this flight is on request, and there was never a follow-up to find out if the flight got confirmed. And unfortunately, the flight was never confirmed. It was never paid for. So she had customers at the airport today trying to board a flight that they were never confirmed on and never paid because she didn't follow up. So That's there it. she has an unhappy customer staying at the airport. Yeah. They're going to have to buy their ticket right yeah. there, and I don't want to think about what the cost of that ticket might be when you stand the day of the flight. Okay, that is that is a nightmare scenario that we do not want to have for your clients because now that agent has lost that client for life. Correct. They've lost all that work that they've tried to create that relationship with is now gone. And because that's sad. It could have been caught. If right. it was booked back in April, this should have been caught. The other thing is, is nobody ever reconfirmed the flight well, because the flight was never confirmed, but if they would have called and said, yeah. can you tell me if this flight's confirmed, is it on schedule, the airline would have said, you don't have anything, and that, yeah. at least right there, could have been cut. Could have been alarmed, yeah. could have called Bungie, and Correct. that's why I'm saying, check your desk, check the flight information. You shouldn't be just giving them, here's your airline tickets, goodbye. Right. Especially now, with the airlines canceling and moving flight schedules 24-7. You've and, got to check and, on them. And the other thing is, is they might have been on a non-stop flight, but maybe that schedule's changed, and now they're going to be making a stop, and they don't know anything about the, you know, the connection. This is so important. If yeah. you have flights, are sometimes 
the most difficult, but it, you must have follow-up. Flights change, schedules change, well, seat assignments change. If the aircraft becomes a 737 instead of a 727, your people aren't going to be sitting in the same seats that they think. So but, but, again, you've got a problem. And Susie, we were talking about maybe that airline only had that one flight to that destination right. today. They, they might only fly twice that week. And now you've got somebody that's not going to get to their destination at yeah, all. Yeah, that, that's... So. Oh. Well, they will cover this. This is really important. Yeah, and, and we've, done, we, we've done it before. Yeah, and we've it's, done it before. It's and, and sometimes just overlooked, and it's it's important. It, it really is, is. It is. The and important. I felt really bad for the agent today when she realized probably what this is, what happened. Right. So we'll we'll touch on that next week. All right. Let's go to uh, let's go to G for geography. All right. Here we go. Welcome everybody. We're doing G for geography today. We're doing the beautiful state of Tennessee as two N's, two S's, two E's. So remember that when you're spelling mm. it. It's got a lot of letters in it, but mostly duplicates. You can see where Tennessee is located. It's bordered by eight states. If you want to go ahead and go to the next. Um, there we go. This is really interesting. I didn't under know this. It's bordered by eight states, um, with Kentucky to the north, Virginia to the northeast, North Carolina to the yes. east, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi to the south. This is one of the very few. And then there's um, Arkansas to the west and Missouri to the northwest. Tennessee is known as the volunteer state. So if you look at this map, this is really interesting. I think this is one of the very really few states we've had. Um, other states, so many states border one state. So um, interesting location. It's got beautiful Kentucky to the north. Then you've got the Carolinas to the east. So. I thought this was really interesting. I had no idea it was bordered by so many states. Beautiful, really nice country here. Okay, so we can go to the next one. Here's Tennessee and the surrounding states. We just talked about that. As you can see, um, Tennessee is a really long state, which is very interesting. You've got Chattanooga, you've got Knoxville, you've got Nashville, um, Gatlinburg. But you can see Chattanooga. There's a, a lot of bigger cities that border other, other states here. So it looks like if you lived in the northern part of Tennessee, getting into Kentucky, or if you live to the east part, getting to Virginia, which is a really beautiful state also. But this is really great, the way the destination is, um, the state itself is, is bordered by so many. Jose, did you notice that there were so many states around the state of Tennessee? No, no. I, I was really surprised. I, yeah, it, it is rather surprising. I mean, I've only flown in, I, I spent a couple of days in Nashville, but you know what I was looking at today, and, and something that really hit me is that um, this state, uh, Nashville and Memphis, are really a high travel destination place. You know, after like, you know, Orlando and Vegas, then comes like, you know, Nashville and Branson, you know, those entertainment right. capitals. And this one is is up there on, you know, so a lot of people go here, you know. It's a very, it's, there's a lot of cities in this state that are, um, have high tourist. Yeah. Um, I mean, Chattanooga, Memphis, look at it. I mean, these places, uh, Knoxville, they go, this is, these are very well-traveled cities and people go there frequently, so. Yeah. It's got a lot going on for it, uh, based on you know the location and the popularity of some of the big cities in this state. Okay, and what is our next one? We're going to go to Tennessee itself. Here we go. You can see um, um, Tennessee is known, like I said, it's known as the volunteer state, and this comes back from um, the Civil War, is my understanding, because so many they had so many people volunteer to come to, to the, uh, the aid to the people there when they were in the Civil War. So I didn't know that was the reason for it. Um, I'm trying to just take a look here at this map. We already talked about the bigger cities here. Um, there's some smaller, this is also, people forget, it's the Great Mount, uh, Smoky Mountains are here. The Appalachian Valley is here. Um, great destinations for vacations. The Smoky Mountains are a really great resort during summertime. It's quite beautiful there. The Tennessee River runs through here. So there's some um, water activities that you can do here. So just taking a look at the location and there's Mississippi River, 
the lake area. It does have a lot to offer as far as sport uh, type things during summer. Also, the um, climate here is pretty, not really hard. They do get hit with some uh, storms and things, but most of the time the temperatures here are pretty moderate. They don't get, they don't get any snow here, I don't think. You know if they get snow? They, I don't they think so. They can get cold. They get a little bit of they get a little bit of snow, especially now with climate change. Right. Most of these southern you know states that never used to get snow now get it. I don't think they get any terrible what we would be talking about hurricanes or anything like no. that. They're no. not in that. But today, no, okay, I and, and I guess that. I might as well talk about our surprise. Uh, <laughs> I've been talking a tip. Everything I've been saying, you know, Don and Kathy didn't happen. <laughs> you know, Don and Kathy didn't happen with the, you know, we have lots travel of, agent we benefits have, and discounts. We have lots of snafus this week. <laughs> this I don't week. know and, what it is. And uh, what our good friend, uh, our agent, and our good friend who lives out there in Knoxville area is Jeffrey Stefan, and, and I was going to invite him to come on, just like we did when Sean Rutledge talked about right. Baton Rouge, and he right. was going to be our guest agent. But, but what happens here is in the summertime, they have a lot of volatile windstorms and a lot of tempests that go through here. And that's why Jeffrey can't be with us today, due to the fact that his internet is gone or it's coming in and out and his cell phone's not working. So they so, get a lot of wind. Yeah, and a lot of, you know, those, not, not so much those, uh, um, but rainstorms and, and wind, you know, not hurricanes, but, you know, really, like the lightning, lightning, lightning storms, like, like, yeah. like they get in Illinois. They all of yeah. a sudden the, the dark, uh, sky gets really dark, yeah, and all of a sudden you know it's really light out. Then it gets real humid, real dark, and then boom, Ooh, you've right. got a storm. Right. So, unfortunately, I'm sorry he can't join us today because he was going to be our guest speaker. We love having these guest speakers, especially when they come from the destination we're talking about, because they've got first-hand information and it makes it very personal. So. We'll try to do it again, and we'll try to continue to pick agents that are in the destination and make you a star for the day. Yeah. I love it. It's great. All right, we're going to go ahead to the next um, next slide, please. Here we go, the Greater Nashville area. Um, the Grand Ole Opry is located in this area. It's um, been continuously running since 1925. The Grand Ole Opry is the oldest live radio show in existence. Tennessee, I, just a couple other things about the state of Tennessee. Tennessee's farmers produce 323 million eggs per year. I wow. thought that was funny. And Tennessee has the 16th largest cattle inventory in the 13th largest beef cow inventory in the United States. So I had no idea there was so much um, different type of, oh, what am I looking for, the word for produce and uh, for the inventory for um, cattle. I was very surprised by that. Also, um, to, beside the Grand Ole Opry here, we've got in another part of the state where we're gonna be going later, we'll be going to, um, Dollywood, we've got the Grand Ole Opry. Um, what else is in this area we want to talk about? Um, it looks like the system here, again, getting from point A to point B, Ashland City, um, to, um, I'm trying to see, to Mount Juliet. Again, every time you fly into a new big city, we always suggest that you get a hop on, hop off. There's a lot of great tours running out of Nashville. There's um, you know, beside the Grand Ole Opry, there's some great museums here. So going into Nashville is a good starting point. It is the main airport there, so you're going to want to do that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll go ahead and go to the next slide, please. Well, you know, speaking of tours, don't they have like the, the um, to my understanding, they have like... Um, you know the bus tours that we have, like tour Beverly Hills and the the homes. Right, the homes. And so, because they have a lot of country western stars that live there, uh, right? And then they've got it's via tour. We'll do that for you. Yep. And then there's a couple other tour companies. They've got the city tours that work out really well there. And I would suggest that you do that for your first time in there, so you get acclimated to the city. It's also a really good walking city. So uh, everything has got great location here. I love this down here. It says the Gulch. Yeah, I, I saw that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> well, Where are you going tonight? We're going down to the Gulch. We're going to the Gulch. Well, come join us. <laughs> so, you know. That's in downtown Nashville. You can see it's really nicely located. It's uh, got uh, great walking. Again, you know, the transportation there is real easy. And if you could go ahead and 
you know, do the hop on hop off and then do some of the city sightseeing tours out of Nashville. There's a lot of options for you here. And, and don't they also have like a, a whiskey belt? There's a whiskey belt and they've got a beer beer belt, beer belt there too. See that we're talking about, we have been doing beer tours for the right. last couple of weeks. They have, so they have there's this. some beer breweries there too. Okay, we can go on to the next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got beautiful downtown Nashville. Look out! Look at, look, at, look, at, look at the river that runs through. Doesn't that look like a? Hey, man, doesn't gorgeous. that look like a Transformers building? Yeah, the yeah. Really <laughs> is. I think that's, Isn't that exactly I think that's right? where they did it. That's really so wild. I, it, I look how that looks there. The way out, so outstanding in the city, you can see that so well. When you fly into Nashville, you will fly over this part of the city, and you'll see that it's kind of surreal looking. It's very cool. Really pretty city. All right, uh, what's our next one? Nashville, we're going to be going to, oh, another one. Look at the barbecue, all the um, little pubs along the way, some of the places you can stop and see some rock and roll music. You've yeah. got a lot of rock, rock and roll, roll and a lot Western. of soul music here going on. So yeah. walking along the main drag here, you can stop and eat and listen to music. It's a beautiful city and it has a lot to offer. It's very, look how highlighted it is. It's very lightning. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it is lightning. Got it. All right, we're going to go ahead to the next one. We've got downtown Memphis, which we talked about already a little bit. Um, I'm trying to, um, in the okay. south part, you can go to Elvis Presley Boulevard, Graceland, and to the uh, full go gospel tabernacles down there. Um, I'm trying to think, there's also the archaeological site and museum, some great museums, National City Rights Museum, the Civil Rights Museum is here, uh, Shiloh National Park. There's an area here, it's called Sun Studio. Yeah. Sun Studio is very famous. Um, it's uh, some of the, where the Blues Hall of Fame is. It's uh, the American Soul Music. It has Elvis Presley, Don B.B. King. Johnny Cash recorded albums and the, at the legendary Sun Studios there. And, uh, of course, Elvis Presley's Graceland Mansion is a popular attraction here. But that Sun Studio took a lot of popular artists, and this is where they did so many of their recordings. Right, and so this is another music uh, a city here. A lot of music. So you can go to these clubs. They'll have a lot of this. Remember um, Hustle and Flow? Remember that movie? That was shot here. That was shot here. Yeah. That was yeah. shot here, and that was in that. That was shot here, and a lot of people still go here, and they do a tour of this. So let's just take a look at some of the photographs that we have from Memphis to share with you guys. <clears throat> Again, look at the look river at the, running straight. Through. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, really pretty. Oh, and here we have. And here I have Graceland. Beautiful Graceland. Um, Graceland. It's a, a mansion. It's on thirteen point eight acres. It's the estate in Memphis, Tennessee. It was once owned by um, actor, singer Elvis Presley, as we all know. My understanding is that his daughter Priscilla now owns this property. There are tours and things through here, but if you're interested in doing a tour there, you need to do it way ahead of time. It's a very popular tour, and they yep. already take so many people on certain days through Graceland. So if you're thinking about doing this, be sure you tell your customers they need to make a reservation ahead of time. You can do this. It's a commissionable item. And you can do it on via tour, um, and I think um, Vax has. Yeah, tours. Expedia Tap does Expedia it too. Expedia Tap does mm -hmm. it. So make sure that your people, your customers, get an opportunity to see Grace M, but it does need an, uh, an advance. And, and the reason why is people from all over the all world, over. all over the, the world, world come to come Grace to visit this place. You're absolutely right. You know, it's one of it's one of the biggest national you know places uh, to visit that here. That and Dollywood. That and Dollywood. That and of course, and Dollywood. Gothenburg and all those places. We have this great video uh, of Memphis, Tennessee, 4K. So let's take a look at it, and, and you'll see what an exciting city it is. Let's roll it, man. Go ahead. Soul music, soul food, and the heart and soul of the American Civil Rights Movement. Memphis is one of the great American stories. Situated in Shelby County, Tennessee, Memphis is the second largest city in the state after Nashville and the largest city on the Mississippi River. Named after the capital of ancient Egypt, just like its namesake, Memphis has risen from the shores of one of the world's most storied rivers into a shining center of commerce and culture. 
Memphis has also endured its share of hard times. Yet ever since the plantation era, the city has found solace in the unifying power of its music. Music which would one day take pride of place in the soundtrack of the 20th century. Head downtown to the Memphis Cotton Exchange and walk the trading floor which was once the center of the world cotton trade. Then follow the threads of an industry which has woven its prosperous and painful legacy through Tennessee's DNA. Take the trolley down South Main to the National Civil Rights Museum, built around the historic Lorraine Motel. Follow 400 years of African Americans' footsteps, from those made in leg irons, to the long march to Washington and beyond. Featuring the bus on which Rosa Parks took a stand by staying seated and the Freedom Riders Greyhound coach, which was brought to a fiery stop by Klansmen, the museum is a sometimes sobering experience. But there is no exhibit more moving than room 306. Peer into the suite where Martin Luther King Jr. spent his final hours before he was slain by a gunshot which reverberated around the entire world. Just a mile and a half from the hotel balcony where the civil rights leader was shot, visit the pulpit of the Mason Temple, where the night before, he delivered one of his greatest and most prophetic speeches, I've been to the mountaintop. After King's death, sorrow and civil unrest descended upon the nation, but the Memphis spirit refused to break. As always, it found solace in its deep faith and in the unifying power of song. At the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum, learn how the uplifting field hollers and porch songs of Delta sharecroppers evolved into a new cathartic musical expression, the blues, and how in the 1950s, the blues gave birth to a wild, liberating sound which jumped the racial divide, rock and roll. on into the Stax Museum of American Soul Music and experience the sounds, costumes, and moves that in the 1960s made Memphis the epicenter of the soul music universe. The museum is stacked with incredible artifacts, including Isaac Hayes' incredible Superfly Cadillac El Dorado, forever spinning in all its shag carpet and 24 karat glory. Of course, no one loves shag pile and gold-plated caddies more than Elvis Presley. Stop by Sun Studios, where in 1954, a 19-year-old kid from the other side of the tracks recorded, That's All Right, Mama, changing the course of popular music forever. Just three years later, Elvis purchased Graceland, a 13-acre estate on the outskirts of town. Tour the mansion where Elvis resided for 20 years. Then, in the meditation garden, paused by his final resting place with fans from across the globe whose lives have been touched by the boy from Tupelo. Just across the road, take off on a joyous ride through Elvis's life and times at Elvis Presley's Memphis. From his galaxy of gold records and jumpsuits, through his years as a Hollywood star, to his lifelong obsession with fine automobiles. There's a whole lot of Elvis to explore here, so set aside at least a few hours. As Elvis knew well, you can't enjoy music on an empty stomach. Thankfully, Memphis is home to some of the best soul food and southern barbecue in America. 
From Monroe Avenue, follow your nose down an alleyway named after the restaurant which put Memphis on the barbecue map. Just like the city's music, the menu at Charlie Virgo's Rendezvous was born out of hardship. Buying up cheap ribs, which in the 1950s were considered offcuts, Charlie combined the art of backyard cookouts with a secret spice rub. Today, his subterranean restaurant serves up an astonishing five tons of charcoal-fired, dry-rubbed ribs every week. It might not look like much from the outside, but just around the corner at Gus's, join pilgrims from all over the world who come to savor fried chicken so lip-smacking good, it's been called a spiritual experience. After visiting Chicken Heaven, head over to the Big Rooster, which stands proudly over the rooftop of Old Dominic Distillery. Take a tour and enjoy a few samples at this Memphis icon, which has been crafting fine bourbon and Tennessee toddy since the 1800s. As evening approaches, head down to Beale Street Landing as the sun drops like liquid gold across the far shores of the timeless Mississippi. After sundown, Memphis lights up, and Beale Street is where it all comes together. The history, the food, the music. It was here where a teenage Elvis pressed his ear to Blues Club windows to hear legends like Howlin' Wolf. And it's here where you'll feel the true spirit of Memphis, a city that's learned the secret of turning hard times and trouble into a magic that soothes, nourishes, and lifts the soul. Entertainment, you name it. You can't, you can't find it there. You don't. You, you shouldn't be there. It's every. Looks like it's twenty four seven there almost every day. And boy, some of that food looks pretty good. So these are good destinations really? for families to enjoy. Got a lot of history. Got a lot of stuff to do in these two places. You know. Plus, there's other places around town you can go camping if you want right. to, or you can go into the cities to enjoy this wonderful culture and music and food and everything. You name it, they've got it. So. We want to again thank you very much for joining us for G for Geography on Thursday. And just keep in mind, you know, everything is starting to open up. Travel is starting back. It's going to be a slow process, but it is coming back. So make sure you keep on top of everything. Keep watching your travel cafe for the, all the updates. And remember, the word we're using is positivity, which we all need right now. So. I'm going to turn it back to Jose, and he's going to come live. We're going to switch, and you're going to get him up close and personal, just the way you love him. <laughs> okay? Now I'm going to lose half the room. I can't oh, tell you. Not. Well, I can't tell you if he's going to be dressed up really nice or if he's going to be California casual today. And next week, I don't know where we're going, but it'll we, be somewhere. Yes, we'll, 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 let we'll, you know. we'll let you know. All right. So take care, have a great week, and thank you for joining us. We are happy to see you. All right, you guys, we'll be right back after we roll these commercials. We'll thank see you, you. soon. Bye-bye. Am I on? No. You, Susie. When you need to relax, unwind, or just get away, but you don't have the budget for a big vacation, what do you do? Save up for a year, but you need something now. The best alternative is the classic weekend getaway for you and that special person in your life. It's an affordable way to get out of the grind and into your comfort zone. But where do you start? There are so many options and places and packages, and you don't want to spend half your weekend traveling. What's the most reachable and affordable destination from where you live, where the crowds are low and the value high? You need a travel pro to help. Your Evolution Travel Agent is an expert at helping you find the best place, best value, and best match for your needs. Backed by a 67-year-old travel company, your Evolution Agent knows the ins and outs and can make that much-needed two-day or three-day weekend getaway stress-free. Call or contact them today and get ready to get away.
Are you looking for adventure and excitement for the whole family? The United States boasts more variety than anywhere else in the world. You can explore nightlife, surf the world's greatest beaches, and see incredible national parks all in your own backyard. Your Evolution agent can help you find the perfect USA destination for your next vacation. If you're looking for fun for the whole family, there's thrilling rides and your favorite characters at Disney World and Universal Studios in Orlando. Or you can explore America's rich history in Washington, D.C. If you're looking for even more excitement, your Evolution agent can help you book an incredible hotel on the famous Las Vegas Strip, tell you the best time of year to see the majestic beauty of our Grand Canyon, or help you find the right Hawaiian island for your favorite type of travel. And the best part? It's affordable. You can take a train or a short flight to most U.S. destinations. Contact your Evolution agent and let them do the planning for you. So all you have to do is get out there and have the experience of a lifetime. The following Archer Evolution Travel Training Session has been brought to you by FunJet Vacations, where your clients can buy now and pay later. FunJet Vacations. Okay, audio's on. Audio's on. Okay. Wow, what a week it's been. <laughs> Tell you. Live television, folks. Welcome to it. You know, via the internet. Things happen. Um, like today, Amanda, when I was doing the morning briefing, I, I got two phone calls. <laughs> you know <laughs> you what know, else so, happened after the morning Oh, briefing. yeah. Don't even go there. Don't even, <laughs> don't even go there. I forgot. I don't know what I did, but I had to rush back to my house because I'm working out. And and so I said, okay, I got to I wrapped up the location and I threw the phone in the car and I'm driving. I'm listening to my favorite jazz music, and Amanda calls. She goes, you know, you're live. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm driving. <laughs> I can't stop. And she goes, you're live right now. Oh, that was pretty crazy. Uh, anyway, you guys, and then of course I deleted it because you know I don't want you guys being in my car as I was. Thank God you didn't hear me cussing, you know, because. <laughs> They got a lot of bad drivers here in Los Angeles. Okay, we're back, and I want to welcome you to our uh, 4.2 or four and a half back to basics. It's not really day five, but what I wanted to concentrate on this one was last week. Amanda was right. We kind of overwhelmed you with a lot of qualifying facts. We gave you a lot of questions, so I've kind of knocked them down a little bit, and we're going to go through these again. And then at the end of this, we're actually going to show you. I'm, I want to show you how we do how we qualify. I'm going to qualify. Chris is going to help us, and I gave her a little scenario and we'll take it from there, okay? Uh, these Back to Basics training sessions happen every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. They are for new Evolution team members, returning agents, sponsors, and consultants. Last week we covered, of course, qualifying. Some important information was discussed in the training, and I highly recommend, even if you know you want a little bit more information about it, go back and review it. If you, have, um, if you can't make it to these live trainings, you can review them on this Facebook page, and uh, you can also find them in the training sessions in your travel cafe out of your Evolution back office under webinars and training videos. Then click on weekly training calls. Senior Evolution agents, sponsors, recruiters, please inform other Evolution agents and new agents about these trainings and where they can be viewed. So let's go to the PowerPoint. Back to basics day four, Evolution travel, qualifying 2.0. Important, I cannot emphasize the importance of the aspect of this uh, step in the steps of the sale. This is so important. This is where you're gonna have to you know, find out what your client's travel needs are. And then from there you go do your research and then you get your, you build your quote and then you email it to them and you follow up, okay? But this is really important. So, and plus you have to do this right. If you don't do it right, like if you call them back and you go, okay, I got you going out on December 15th, and they go, no, we want to go out on December 18th, that's because you didn't listen. You didn't listen. So it's, a, it's important that you listen, that you find out. So let's go to the very first slide. Qualify, what is it? 
It's a beginning conversation with your client. This is the first time that you're working with your client. This might be a referral. This might be a friend of a friend that's you know is bringing you business. You want to create a really good rapport with them. You want to listen. You want to be friendly. You want to look nice. You want to take down the information and be a professional. Agent consultant, ask questions. You want to sound natural. And you also want to ask why, the reason for the vacation or the trip. Why are they going? This will help you. And then you also want to listen to what they say. You want to listen. And then at the end of it, after you've done qualifying and you've listened to everything, then you want to go back and say, okay, Mr. Johnson, you said that you wanted to take you and your wife for the 25th wedding anniversary, and you wanted to do three nights in London, three nights in Paris, three nights in Rome. You see what I mean? And then they go, yes, yes, that's what I said. Great, I'm now going to go get that, research the quote, and I'll come back to you. Be careful of too many destinations. You don't want to, if, if you have a client that says, well, we want to go on a cruise, we want to do an all-inclusive, we want to do Vegas, we want, that's too much. It's too much. So what you, in that case, what you do is you go, okay, you guys haven't really decided where you want to go. i tell you what, I will help you, Mr. Client. I will send you some YouTube videos of the destinations that you have mentioned. That way you can review them with Mrs. Client and you both can decide how you want to do that, how you want to do the vacation. So use the tools that we show you. Use the tools that we show you. It's like I was talking to a man about this because I want um, how to market your business. I want to, you know, the future of qualifying is going to be on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on Zoom, especially during these times because people can't make it to the office. They can't make it to the coffee shop. They're tied down with their kids or their jobs that they're working from home. But they have Zoom, and that's something that you should have in your social media toolbox. Right, Amanda? Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, my mic was off. Um, but no, definitely. Zoom is something that people are using for interviews now, for yeah. anything. So I heard really, people get married. People get married. <laughs> no on one's Zoom. getting married on Zoom, are they? Yes, I saw that. <laughs> yes, people like were getting married. Viewing. Because they were, they were separated due to this, you know, the lockdown that they got married on Zoom. Oh, my God. Yeah, I would have no. just waited. But, you know, some people can't wait, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that... I'm just thinking about his Zoom honeymoon. I don't want to go there. Never mind. <laughs> but let's, let's, let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> Who's throwing stuff? That must be Mr. Archer. If he's throwing, if he's throwing stuff. Okay. Um, all right. This is must be no See? I knew it. See? Now I'm getting rained on by M&Ms. All right. See? <laughs> you missed that one. All right. Qualify. Oh, my gosh. This has been an incredible week. See? I'm not picking... I'm not picking these up, man, because I don't know. They may have COVID. <laughs> these M&Ms M &Ms may have COVID on them. You know, that's it. I need to create social distance. <laughs> Come on in here. Come on in here. Say hello. We're not socially distanced. <laughs> well, here. Move that. Yeah. Well, I have to open oh, up the oh, screen. I got to make sure. Right. Pick up the jelly beans right there. <laughs> sit down. Sit down and talk to us. Here, let, let's see. Let's adjust the shot. Hang on one sec, I have to edit them. Where am I? Let me edit them in. Okay. Okay. Check it out, folks. Look who we have in the house. The man himself. I am here. We're talking about qualifying. Okay. And last week, I think I kind of over-bombarded too much. So I wanted to come back a little bit. And what we're going to do at the end of this list we're gonna go and actually do an exercise with Krista so we can show them how to qualify. What do you think? Where do you wanna go? When do you wanna go? Right, well, here it is. Dave, how much do you wanna spend? Right, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, there's a little bit more if you wanna have that conversation. So let's just go through the list really quick here. We have dates of travel must be known. Are the dates flexible? Why are they going? Why is it an anniversary, a reunion? What, 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 what is it? How many travelers, ages, infants, children, seniors? Budget for the vacation. And if they go, I don't know what the budget is, then ask them what star hotel you, would you like? Five star, four star, three star? Well, come on. Everybody knows how much they're willing to spend. Yeah, but They then, just might not want to share. That's right. And give that information. So if you said to me, so, okay, so I'll tell you what. You qualify, you qualify me. Uh-oh. Susie, help. All no, right, no, no, you, <laughs> you started this. You all right, all right, qualified all right, me. Okay. Um, hi there, Mr. Archer. Uh, tell me, um, where would you like to go? I don't know. 
You don't know? Ah, my wife wants to go. I don't know where I'm going. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Um, do you have any idea? Do you have four or five destinations? You want she to go? wants to go shopping, and she wants to lay out on the beach, and she wants to go out to fancy restaurants, okay. and she wants to spend all my money. Okay. And where does she want to do that? Would she like the Caribbean? Would she like the Hawaiian Islands? Would she like to go to Fiji, Tahiti? It's just somewhere where there's lots of girls in bikinis that I can sit on the beach and watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's great. That's great. How about Puerto Vallarta? Have you ever been there? There's some nice is, beaches. Is there. that in Mexico? Yes, that is in Mexico. Would Mrs. Archer like going to Mexico? Probably not. Okay, all right then. How about the Hawaiian Islands? They have some beautiful beaches there. She wants to go to the south of France. Oh, the Riviera. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they have plenty of beaches there. Absolutely. And they have some beautiful, there's Khan, there's uh, Marseille. That's a nice destination. Okay, when time would you like to go? So when is the, when, when is the season? When is the, when is the uh, most popular time to go? Well, the most popular time to go is the summertime. Okay. Because, because in the wintertime, it snows in France and it gets very cold. Even in the south of France? Yes, a little bit. You could go probably late spring. Yeah, no, no. No bikinis. Yeah. See, so you want to go like in the summer months, but be aware, it's very crowded. We got, they got a <laughs> lot of tourists from all over, so you'll see a lot of girls in bikinis. Perfect. Okay. And there's plenty of things to shop. Um, so you want to go there. And uh, what type of hotel would you like to stay at? Do you want to oh, stay Oh, uh, the best. My wife will only stay in the best. Okay, great. We can do that. How about a Ritz Carlton right there in, in Con, right there oh, on the beach? Oh, beautiful. Okay, great. All right. Do you need a car? Can I get a chauffeur? You can get a chauffeur Perfect. too. I can get that for you too. No problem at all. Every day? Every day. Perfect. Yes, I can get that for you. And, and let me ask you. Um, so we're looking at in the summertime. Um, do you want to fly first class? I, I, I would take it Mrs. Archer would like to fly. Well, business, business class. She'll fly business class. Okay, business class is fine. We can get that set up for you. Um, that's pretty much it. So let me make sure I get this right, okay? So how much do you think that's going to cost me? Mm, I'll have to check and see. Because th I'm figuring maybe $5,000. Mm, it might be a little bit more, but I'll see what I can do. Let me just, you know, I got the information. Let me just review and make sure that it's correct. You and so you could so you could do the trip, the whole trip with the business class airline tickets and Ritz Carlton and everything else in Paris for a week for five thousand dollars total. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, how much you think it'll be? Mm, we're looking at maybe with business class. I I would have to check. I'd have to check and get back to you. And why don't you give me twenty four hours and I'll email you that quote and we can sit down and talk about it. How's that? Okay, you just got yourself in a trap. Oh, okay. Yeah, you right. just trapped yourself. I'll tell you why. You want to set it up. You want to set it up so that you get as much information up front. Because what I just described to you is closer to twenty thousand dollars. I know. Yeah. So going back to a customer that's got a five thousand dollar expectation, you're pretty much done, and and you're you're actually setting up a, a, a lot of wrong. And then we're having kind of fun with this, but but let me qualify you. Okay. Um, you ready? I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a good vacation. Um, yes, sir. I am. So, how are you today, Jose? I'm fine. I'm good. And how are you doing with the whole COVID situation? I'm doing just fine. Are you, are you, are you working? Are you? Yeah, I'm working. Yeah, the boss yeah. brought me back full time. Really? Yeah. Good boss. So, so it's good. Nice it's good. guy. Yeah. So, you want to go on vacation? How can we go on vacation now? You just had all this time off. Well, I Don't you because, think you should work and, yeah, and help? Yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten so much vacation time, <laughs> okay, because I work so much. Because <laughs> the boss is so generous? So Perfect. So he Let's said, keep it on me, okay? He said, they, they told me I have to go. <laughs> okay, so, so I hear you want to go on vacation. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, when are you going to go? When are you looking to go? Um, I want to go in October. Okay. So that... Great time of year. October is my favorite time to, to travel. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything in mind where you'd like to go or would you like to kind of help me or help you narrow it yeah, down? Yeah, um, uh, I want to go to Europe. I want to go to Europe and uh, I, I want to do uh, um, um, the El Camino. I want to do the walk. Okay. And, and, I want, and then after that, I want to go on a cruise. Okay. Are you, are you thinking about a, a river cruise or are you thinking about an ocean cruise? An ocean cruise, the Mediterranean. Okay. Out of Barcelona. Uh, okay. Um, 
So you want to go October. You know, do you have any idea of how much you've budgeted for this experience? Um, no, not really. Okay. If I told you that round trip airline tickets are going to be between fifteen and eighteen hundred dollars a person, uh, the El Camino is probably three to four days, three days. Yeah, I looked at I looked at some things. They said it's like six or seven. Okay, so you six or seven days. I would estimate you're looking at two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars a night for hotels. So six times three, there's about two thousand dollars there. So you're at about uh, fifty six hundred. A cruise is going to run you about twenty five hundred dollars a person. So you're right now you're looking in the about the eleven thousand to twelve thousand dollar price range. Is that within your budget? Mm, no, not really. I'm about ten thousand. Okay. Okay, absolutely doable. Um, the Mediterranean cruise, uh, are, which is more important to you, the cruise or the or the walk? Both. Okay. Because I, I, I really want to do both. Okay. So we could probably, I, I would probably try to talk you into maybe doing four days as opposed to six. You might not do the entire walk, but I would say that there's probably more important parts of that that may be more advantageous or more interesting to you. What can I do this? If instead of doing like a seven night cruise, can I do a four night cruise? I'll check and see if the four night cruises are available. If you wanted a seven night experience, which I would certainly recommend if you're going to go that far to Europe. Yeah. Then um, I would look at categories. If we get you now, twenty five hundred dollars is pretty much all in with your gratuities, with your taxes, with your port fees. Um, and I'm thinking an outside cabin. If we took you to an inside cabin, are you going to spend much time in the cabin? Probably not. You might be able to do it. You might save a thousand dollars. So, yeah, if we're if we're frugal, uh, we may be able to get you down in the in the uh, certainly ten to eleven thousand dollar range. So I, I think that would certainly be doable. Okay. Uh, now. Do you have specific dates in October that you'd like to go? Mm, probably the middle of October. Perfect. Somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Susie, okay. how am I doing? You're <laughs> <laughs> this is the best I know. Susie, See, Susie. We should bring him back more, right? We should bring him back more, right? Really, I know. Yeah, this I know. Is really good because you're a typical agent and a customer. Yeah. I am not only the boss, I'm a client too. Yes, oh, great. <laughs> right, let me go get my hair plugs. <laughs> Anyway, you know what? What you want to remember, folks, is that you just want to have a conversation with people. You don't. You don't really have to. You know. So, Jose, how much you got? You know, you don't have to grill them. Right. right. Um, find out what the family. What, what do you like to do when you go on vacation? What do you like to do? Um, when you're on a cruise, tell me what your day looks like. Okay, I like that. Hang out by the pool. Ugh. I, I, I do that. I Although walk. there are bikinis out by the pool. Yeah, I, that's and the bar. And the bar, okay. <laughs> okay. I like to go to the shows. I like to go to dinner, and I like to go to the dancing. Okay. So my typical day is when I go on a cruise, my typical day is I get up in the morning, I take a leisurely breakfast, I read a book. I usually read 100, 150 pages in my book. Uh, I go to the casino for at sea, and I gamble for an hour or two. And then I go to have lunch, and then I go in the afternoon, I go take a nap, and then I get up and gamble a little in the afternoon, and then Jill and I go to cocktail at 5. We go to dinner at the late seating. After that, we go back to the casino. I go home, I read, and I watch maybe a movie or read some more, and then I go to sleep, and I get up and do it all over the next day. Okay. And when we get to port, we've, we've, we've traveled enough that, you know, when we get into port, we pretty much go in, get our own taxi cab. We don't do a lot of, we don't do a lot of land tours. We do a lot of our own uh, restaurant hunting. We like mm -hmm. to hunt for restaurants that are off the beaten path. We don't like to go to a lot of the, I mean, we'll take a taxi cab and drive 30 to 40 minutes away from where the cruise port is. Mm -hmm. So we get in country to, to, to get a more, um, a less tourist experience and a more uh, an authentic uh, locals experience. Right. So different people on vacations do different things. If, if you're going to take a lot of land tours and you want to do the scuba diving or you want to do, you know, golf or, or those are anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars. And so you got to be mentally prepared uh, for your customers to say, you know, want to make sure that you're leaving yourself enough in your budget so that you can do those extra things that you want to do. Uh, Ron, don't you think, it, you know, those type of questions are so important because there's always the, you got to be careful like with Hawaii, because if you, don't you have to ask the client, what kind of environment do you want? Do you want that, you know, Waikiki Beach, Hawaii City, 
vibrancy, hotels, theaters, all that, or Maui. Where Maui's a little bit more mellower, you know, it, it cl closes up really early. Because you got to make sure about that, because you don't want the client coming back going, oh, I was so bored in Maui. Well, again, what do you do when you go on vacation? Yeah. Oh, we like to go lay on the beach, and we like to, uh, you know, we like to read, and we like to suntan, and then we go have a cocktail. We go to dinner, and we're in bed by 9 o'clock. Maui or Kauai? Maui's a, there's, there's a lot to do on Maui. Kauai, the big island, uh, they're not going to have a lot of nightlife. Uh, but Maui, uh, Kanapali Beach, Kihei, uh, Waikiki Beach, there's, there's a lot of nightlife. There's a lot of hustle bustle going on. But on the other hand, there's no place like Honolulu. Honolulu is, is, a, is a wonderful town. I love Honolulu. You get a Hawaiian feel to it. Now Reggie's checking me out, too. <laughs> you got all these people checking in on me. They're looking in. Oh, what's he t I, well, I know. This is such a new thing. I should do this a lot. I've been telling you to do it for the last year and a half, and you're like, no, I don't want to come in here and do this. I said, I said, come in here and use, Reggie, come, been right? asking for this for over a year now. I said, no. come in here and do this. And you know what? It's going to be better. We're going to be, yeah. Okay, well, if you make it fun, then I'll come and do it. So, all right. Uh, we'll, we'll add some props. We'll add a big wheel, and we can do, you know, Wheel of Fortune or something. I have to get a haircut. <laughs> I, need a, I need a haircut, though. i got to go get a haircut. Or something, you know. But yeah, this 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 could be fun. And, Look, uh, you guys, when when you're out qualifying a client, it's real simple. Get a get a get a series of questions. Write yourself five or six questions. How much money do you want to spend? That is probably the number one question, because that dictates where they go, how long they're staying, what type of accommodations they're going to have, uh, and then whatever money they've got left after. So you know, if, if somebody's going to go. The one thing about cruising, which is so great, is that it's an all-in price. You right. know, you're, you're 2500 bucks with your port tax, your gratuity, your meals, covers everything except your gambling, your shopping, and, and mm -hmm. your tours. Right. So you don't have to worry about meals and these types of things. Whereas with your hotel, you know, in a great hotel in a, in a, in a decent destination, it's 250 a night. Then you got another, you got another breakfast is 50, lunch is 75, and dinner is 150 if you're in Waikiki Beach, for example. So you got to budget all that stuff in there. And you want to make sure that you're, 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 you're recommending stuff for your, your customers that, um, you know, are in their wheelhouse. Or, for another example, you say, hey, you know, what, what about getting a, a, in Hawaii, there's a lot of kitchenettes. There's a lot of places that have kitchenettes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I will tell you, um, Advantage Direct, uh, Profit Agility. Yeah, my, the my condos agility. in Hawaii are low price. They've got kitchens. They're in great destinations. Mm -hmm. And they're about half the price that Expedia is uh, for right. the same program. And they're on. They're, yeah. If you're looking at the condos with. with, uh, uh, with uh, my Profit Agility. My Profit Agility, those are 50% off. Those are great programs. Um, Reggie and his family was, I put him in one a couple of years ago, it was $1,800 for a two bedroom oceanfront in uh, Napili, right north of uh, Kanapali Beach yeah. for a week. No, 18... that, that was last year. That and was after that was Expedia, after the convention. Expedia was 30, it was 3,600. Was, it, was, it was twice the amount of money for a week. Right. So there's some great deals that are out there. Help people keep it in budget. There's great uh, discounts that are coming up. So just ask them, you know, what do you like to do when you go on vacation? How much, you know, how much is your budget? What time of year you want to go? How long you want to be gone? How many are going? And people will know, well, you know, I can only take a week off of work. You know, mm -hmm. my job's only going to give me a week. Oh, okay. Um, so are you looking for a cruise or are you looking to go direct? Yeah. Or, or on a hotel? So again, you've, you've got a lot of different options, and they may know, they just may not know to, to tell you in advance, so you've got to kind of pull it out of them. But if you have a conversation, you ask intelligent questions, you listen to what their answers are, you could put, you could put together a vacation that they will be relaxed, they will enjoy, and it will be memorable for them. Yep, and you'll have them for life, and you'll have them for life. I, I do want to ask you a question. Um, in regards to... Um, the client that has multi destinations. Oh, we don't know. We want to go on vacation, but you know, we, I don't know if I want to go to an all inclusive. The wife wants to go on a cruise. Da 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 da. What do you recommend? What do you do? I recommend you, why, you and your wife go out to dinner. You sit down with a nice bottle of wine and you figure out what you guys want to do because I don't want to get in the middle of your marriage. <laughs> 
okay, I recommend watching YouTube, but, you know, no. setting up YouTube um, videos. <laughs> well, the first question is, who's going to win? Yeah, they. Okay. Who's gonna win? I mean, who got to pick the last destination? Right. I mean, I got news for you. Where my wife wants to go, oh, you go. I'm following. <laughs> right. Okay. So, I mean, let's be clear about this. Okay. Um, it depends. The dynamics are different in different families, and is uh, you know, he wants to go on a cruise. She wants to go lay on a beach, uh, do a cruise, and get off and lay on a beach. Uh, you yeah. know, it. it Again, it, it's dictated by budget, it's, and budget dictates length of stay, budget dictates exactly. accommodation. Right. You know, first the question is, do you hate cruises? Why, your wife wants to go on a cruise, are you against that? Um, yeah. Right. Well, I'm not really against it. Well, how important is it for you to keep your wife happy? It's a fair question. Right. Um, you know, who's gonna set the, who, typically the female sets the dynamic of where and uh, and 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 what they're going to do. And again, if there's if it's a family environment, if it's a family vacation, I mean, again, there are different dynamics. Is it a if it's a if it's a family reunion? There's a lot, you know. You also have to look at the, what the function of the vacation is. If it's just a getaway, romantic getaway for the two of you, you got a lot more flexibility. But if it's a family reunion, mm. easier to do on a cruise than it is to do on a hotel. Yep. Uh, if it's you know if it's a, an anniversary. You know, is it a surprise? I mean, there's yeah. so that you you are you are in many ways your consultant. Uh, you're not a marriage counselor, but you are going to <laughs> impact uh, the relationship and the more positive the vacation. When somebody comes home, my wife and I come home from vacation. Well, that was lovely. Or we come home on a lousy vacation and we're at each other's throats. So, you know, because you're tired and you're cranky, Cranky, and now you got to go back to work, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, we always try to get, for example, we get, we never get home on a Sunday anymore. We get home on a Saturday to go to work on a Monday. We want a day to decompress. So, again, if they've only got a week, that means they got six nights instead of seven nights. So, you, what are the priorities? The more you ask people the more you can design, custom design something that works for them, even if it's just little touches. Did you want me to get a bottle of wine for you and your wife when you get to the room? Did you want maybe some... Uh, flowers some, some uh, yeah, yeah, fruit cocktail, flowers, flowers chocolates, right. chocolate strawberries. Right. Um, we've done a lot of different things like that. So, um, you know, we've already, we've set up dinner reservations for anniversary dinners, either on board or while they're in port somewhere. I mean, you there's so much that you can do to contribute to someone's vacation. You just need to have a discussion with them, and you need to listen. You need to hear what it is they're asking you. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Archer. I really appreciate you coming in here and having fun with us today. I got to go because my boss says I I, I go too long. <laughs> Okay, What's so, that, what, how long have you been on? We've been on since three. But God, you talk a lot. <laughs> no, but Susie was on. <laughs> Susie was on for a half hour. Hey guys, uh, I, how many people are on this thing? Uh, before Ron goes, I want to say we started a poll, and uh, we said bring Ron back. <laughs> bring yes, Ron back. See? No, or definitely yes. And outstandingly, we got 100 percent yes. So definitely yes was 64 percent, and. Regular yes was thirty six percent, and zero percent of people said no. <laughs> so Ron, yeah, but you only got awesome. four people that answered the quiz. No, we didn't. We oh. had fourteen. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there you go. So there's only fourteen people that use. No, how many people we got in the room? How many people we got? Uh, we got about thirty six. Well, how come the rest of them didn't say whether they want to be back or not? I don't know. Maybe they didn't click it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so. They're staying out of it. All right, well, chickens. Listen, you guys, <laughs> I, I want to thank you so much for being back to basics. Look who we had. Uh, Krista, thank you. We'll use you some other time. Krista laughed. I told her it was she could go. Okay. Oh, did you uh, have somebody else set up? Yeah. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. We were going to do Krista. <laughs> I had it set up when we were going to go on Zoom. We were going to do that. But Mr. Archer decided to come in and, and, and you know, join us today. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Ron. All right, uh, guys. For coming in here, okay? Hey, thank you for all you do. Uh, be well. Uh, send this out to your friends. Um, it's it, it's good good information. Bye. All right, all right you guys. I will Bye. see you next week um, when we continue with day five of Back to Basics. Um, what? And we're gonna roll this customized marketing video. Oh yeah, we're gonna roll this customized marketing video that we have for you. So let's roll this. Here we go. Watch this.
And that's it, I'm done, right? It's time to treat yourself and head to one of the most exciting cities in the United States, Las Vegas. In this incredible city, the weather is always amazing and you can find entertainment any hour of the day or night. Eat in world-class restaurants with celebrity chefs, play in stunning casinos housed in some of the world's largest hotels, and see spectacular shows you can't find anywhere else. They say what happens in Vegas? stays in Vegas, but your Evolution agent has the inside scoop. With the airport located within 15 minutes of the world-famous Strip, Las Vegas is one of the most convenient U.S. destinations to visit. It's also a family-friendly city, offering experiences for all ages. If you want even more adventure, you can get outside the city for world-class hiking and rock climbing. Contact your Evolution agent and let them do the planning for you. They have the backing of Archer Travel Service, a 67-year-old travel company, so you can rest assured you're getting the most value for your money. Call today. They have access to timely specials that will end soon.